Okay, so we're going to do problems like we did before, except instead of you identifying the transformations, we're going to do the transformations. So 23, we have an X and Y translation. So let's see, parent function. The parent function is without the transformations, which is just log base 2 of X. The transformations are, well, we have X plus 3, so we have an X shift of negative 3. And we have minus 2 here, so we have a Y shift of negative 2. So what this means is my vertical asymptote is going to change, and here um, the x-axis, this is kind of the y-axis, shifts. Okay, so that the function we're looking at, g of x, is log base 2 of x plus 3 minus 2. Okay, so let's plot the parent function. So all logarithmic functions have an intercept of x equals 1. All the parent functions do. Then we take the base, which is 2. We go that far over, 1, 2, and we go 1. What power do we need to raise 2 to to get 2? The answer is 1. Likewise, there's a, a reciprocal type relationship. Here we went to 2, so we'd go to 1 half. And instead of going up to 1, we'd go down 1. Now, the next one we go is go 4 units and up 2. That's because to raise 2, which is our base here, to the second power, we get 4. And likewise, uh, 8 would be 3. If you can't remember these, then just write them down and have them available. Okay, so this is our parent function. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift the x-axis, negative 3, so this is here. So our vertical asymptote is going to go up against this instead of the y-axis. And then we have a y-shift of negative 2. And all we have to do is now draw the points relative to this new origin. So if we go over here, we saw that we had it intersection here, then we went over 2, up 1, over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2, which is there, over 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up 3. And then on the other side, we go half, negative 1, fourth, negative 2, Eighth, negative three, so this is our transformed function. Okay, and the next one, we ha again have just an x and y shift. So let's write this down. So for 24, our parent function is log base 3 of x instead of log base 2 of x. Looking at the transform version, we have an x shift of plus 2, because we have x minus 2 here, and we have a y shift of plus 3. And that's it. We don't have any reflections. So here's our graph paper. So we're going to do our parent function. 
So all of the parent functions have an intercept, x intercept of 1. Instead of going over 2 and up 1, we go over 3 and up 1. And then we go over 9 and up 2. Now to the between 0 and 1, we go to a third, negative 1, a ninth, negative 2. So that is my parent function. Now for the transformation, I'm going to shift my axes. Uh, the x shift, which is the y axis, is going to go two units in the positive direction and the x axis, which is y equals zero, moves three units. And then we are going to plot points on there. The same relative distances from the origin. So here we went one unit over. So we're going to use one unit over. We go one, two, three, positive one. And the next one's going to be off the screen. We go one third, negative one, one ninth, negative two. We make sure we don't cross this line because we had to go all the way to nine, which would be one more out here, so you, know, you could kind of sketch it out. So that is my transformed function. All we've done is shift the, the x and y directions. Okay, the next one's going to have an x-axis reflection and a x shift. Got the page there. We'll get a piece of graph paper. So first we will copy so 25. G of x is negative log base 3 of x plus 1. So my parent function is log base 3 of x. Now the two transformations, I have an x shift of negative 1, because I have x plus 1 in the argument. We have a y shift of 0, because there's nothing added on the end. And we have an x axis reflection. Okay, so we're going to plot our parent function. So again, all of the logarithm parent functions have an x-intercept of 1. Because it's log base 3, we're going to do the same thing as we did the last problem. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 1. 3 to the first power. 3 to the second power is 9. Go up 2. Then go the other way to 1 third, negative 1. 1 ninth, negative 2. So there is the parent function. Now the transform function, we're going to shift in the x direction. So that means that we're going to take the y-axis and move it one unit to the left. And then we are going to make sure we do the x-axis reflection. So at this point, the x-intercept is just going to stay where it is in terms of the y-direction. So this one moves over one to the left, but it doesn't flip because it's on the x-axis. Now this point is going to move to the left once, one unit, but instead of being above the x-axis, it's going to be below the axis. Likewise, here, this point is going to shift one unit to the left, but instead of being on top of the x-axis, it's going to be below the x-axis. Now that one here, that comes over here to one-third, and we go up instead of down, and then one-ninth, keep going up, and so we end up with this transformed function. 
So you can see it's flipped across the x-axis. It's pointing down, going down. And it's all shifted to the left. Okay. The next one is going to have a y-axis reflection because of the negative signs inside. So our parent function is log base 2, because okay, so here's log base 2. So we're going to have a x-axis reflection and an x and y shift. <coughs> but like we've pounded into your heads here, when you have a negative in front of the x sign here, you're going to factor out the negative out of both terms. So you end up with this transform in it for And if you don't show that, I'm not going to give you any credit to get the transformation right. So you factor that negative sign out. So that means my x shift is plus 3. I use this. My y shift is negative 2. And I have a y axis reflection. So let's go ahead and insert a page so I know where we're going here. Okay, let me get rid of that now. Okay, so we're going to um, plot the parent function. So we're going to plot the parent function. Here's our x-axis. We have vertical x asymptoted x equals 0. Because it's base 2, we're going to have 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 8, 3. And then you go halfway down 1, fourth of the way down 2, eighth of the way down 3. Okay, so that's our parent function. Now we're going to transform that. So we're going to shift the going to shift in the x direction plus 3 units, which is this way. I'm going to shift down 2 units. And then we're going to reflect across the y-axis. So here we went, we went right 1. So here we're going to go left 1. Here we went right 2. Here we're going to go left 2, up 1. So we, we're only having a y-axis reflection, so we don't want to do both things. Then we went right 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. Then we went 1, we went 8, up 3. So we're going to do the same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up three. So those are the ones above this new axis. Then we go halfway between one and zero, down one quarter of the way, down two, eighth of the way, down three, and so that is my transform function, which has an x shift of plus three, Y shift to minus 2 and a Y axis reflection. And the final one is we're doing everything. 
And let me get a piece of scrap paper. And it didn't go far enough. Okay, there we go. So, as normal, we need the parent function. So because we have a log base three, our parent function for number 27 is log positive log base three of x. Now we are going to rewrite the transform version by factoring out this negative sign. So we get negative x, negative the quantity x plus two plus four. So we have x minus, we have x plus two, that means we have an x shift of minus two. We have a y shift plus four. We have an x axis reflection. That's because of the negative sign in front. And we have an y axis reflection, which is because of the negative sign inside. OK, so we'll do our parent function. Um, so again, all these go through this point. It's log base 3, so we're going to go 1, 2, one, two 3, up 1, 9, up 2. 3 squared is 9. We go 1 third, down 1, one ninth down two, and that gives us our parent function. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the transformations, but before we do that, we need to shift things. So we're going to shift it negative two in the x direction, positive four in the y direction. Okay, so that's our x and y shifts. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to start this new origin. We're going to go left instead of right. So we're going to go one unit here. That's this point. And we're going to go left, continue to go to left, but instead of going up one, Three, we're going to go down one at three. So one, two, three, down one. And the next point will actually be off here by one unit. So that we can we can kind of estimate where that is. So eleven would negative eleven would be there. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, down two, which would be about right there. And then we go halfway between, well, we don't go halfway, we go to third way here, one third, go up one instead of down one, one ninth. And so that is our transformed function. You can see it's flipped across the y axis, it's flipped across the x axis, and the origin has been shifted. And that's it.